Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of World Talks here on TVP World, where every word matters. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. Please join me and my guests on this next interview. Poland has nominated Piotr Serafin, a close ally of Prime Minister Donald Tusk, as its candidate for EU Budget and Administration Commissioner. Known for his extensive experience in EU politics and governance, Serafin's appointment could elevate Poland's influence within the European Union. His candidacy come at a pivotal time, just months before Poland takes over the EU presidency in 2025. Joining us today to discuss this development is Tomasz Jajons, analyst at the Polish Institute of International Affairs. Hello, sir, and welcome to TVP World. Hello, thank you for having me. Can you first help us break down what does uh, Piotr Serafin's nomination signify for Poland's influence within the European Union? So I think this is a pretty important portfolio. Um, so the, the budget, especially taking into account the fact that the negotiation that usually takes years actually, you know, to conclude regarding the future budget are just uh, kicking in. So the fact that uh, the, the, uh, a poll will be leading this kind of uh, discussion is very important. I think we should also underline that although Piotr Serafin didn't receive the executive vice presidency, which gives commissioners uh, an extra remit of power, I would say, he will report directly to the president, um, unlikely other commissioners who will work in clusters and every executive vice president um, has kind of, you know, their own commissioners. But Piotr Serafin will report directly, which I think you know, proves that this will be a very important role in the in the next commission. Right. Uh, Tomasz Orowski, the former deputy foreign minister of Poland during an interview with us, has praised uh, Serafin for his expertise in economics, law, European affairs. Do you agree that these qualifications make him a best fit for the EU budget and administration portfolio, especially in today's political climate? Yeah, sure. I, I think his expertise in EU affairs is unquestionable, I think. He, for, for, for many years, actually, he was working on EU affairs from different angles in different um, institutions. What is uh, interesting for me is the fact that the European Commission is getting more and more politicized, meaning that, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, meaning that, you know, more politicians get the roles of the um, European commissioners, uh, whereas Serafin, actually, he's from the other, you know, side of the fence, so to speak, meaning that he is more of a of an official. You know, he worked more like an an expert from the other side of the um of of this of the spectrum. So uh, I think uh, it's interesting that uh, uh, Poland decided actually to choose uh, him and and not necessarily, you know, a big political name. But again, I'm not saying this is, you know, like. Choosing a politician is necessarily a bad thing. It's just uh, um, it, it's it's just just a choice. So that's interesting. But what I tr what I'm trying to say is that you know his expertise. He he used to be official in in European institutions. So without a doubt, he has uh, a qualification, and this is a, a person who will you know find his way uh, around in in uh, in Brussels. Now, there's an interesting thing that people have been pointing out, and that would be the timing of appointing someone from Poland to be in charge of the budget. Well, seeing that Poland will soon go from being a net benefactor of the European Union funds to a net contributor. Do you think that this timing with the Polish person coming into the budgetary position will have a little bit of conflict of interest there? Yes, that's yeah. That's uh, obviously that's um, that's something we should consider. So first of all, the commissioners they should be you know so-called honest brokers. And like you've mentioned already, commissioners should um, kind of forget about the country from which uh, they come. There's this funny expression uh, when the the commissioners then don't say you know the country uh, from which I come from, but rather the country I know the best. You know, kind of to pretend that there's, you know, that there's nationality doesn't play that big of a role. Mm, so obviously the commissioner should have the interest of the whole union um, in mind. Obviously the facts are a little bit different and there are, you know, scientific research showing that this is not always the case. But I think even though a, a, a Polish person is in charge of the budget, obviously the budget will be voted by every EU member countries. So, Member states. So 
you know, we shouldn't also overestimate the influence of the commissioner. Obviously, this is an important role. Obviously, uh, there will he, he will have some kind of leverage, some kind of influence. But it doesn't mean that you know, single-handedly, he will just uh, say where the European Union will will uh, will put um, its money. Um, and also, there are other mechanisms, you know, of scrutiny um, in this kind of um, of institution. So I I wouldn't be too much worried about um, this kind uh, of thing. And if there is a conflict of interest, uh, clearly, you know, other countries and uh, politicians will um, uh, will talk about this. So yes. <laughs> right, but uh, we also do know that Seraphim himself is uh, have very close ties to the Polish prime minister. Do you think that that would be something that the critics might wield to voice their concern over a potential conflict of national interest and in that of the European Union? Mm, yes, but like I said, I, I, I think um, luckily most of the commissioners, they know what the job is about and they know that they cannot really afford actually obviously there are exceptions but you know they, they 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 can't really you know just push the agenda of their own country this happens of course from time to time but like a commissioner that will try to just you know try to be a, a proxy of his own government and i think to to a certain extent this, this happened before but his influence will dramatically drop because everybody will know that this he's not an honest broker he rather, you know, tries to gain some political points. So I think this will be counterproductive, actually, in a way, to try to push the political agenda of the, of of, uh, of one's uh, own country. Um, so yeah, and obviously we should, you know, judge by the uh, by the effect, and we'll see how this will um, how this will uh, unfold. But uh, we'll see. Yes. Right. And being a very experienced individual himself, I think it is safe to say that there will be a balance, at least in an attempt of that there going forward. Now, there's also some division between more frugal EU countries and those advocating for a higher joint spending. Where do you think uh, Serafin's position is going to be? So if we take a look at the whole composition of the college, it's true that actually the frugal countries might have be concerned that uh, a lot of important economic portfolios went to southern countries, which yeah. traditionally are considered, you know, like more lenient to spending, to more more money, to common debt, etc. Um, unlikely the the northern country um, that uh, care about uh, uh, you know budget not being overspent. Um, I think Poland uh, also. Kind of traditionally uh, was in between of those two um, camps, um, and I think also the fact that the uh, French um, has the uh, an, eco an important economic portfolio, um, it creates a, a certain balance. Obviously, Poland wants EU spending to be well spent and um, uh, wants po Poland wants you know to the the, the EU budget um, to a certain extent to, to be to to be widened. Mm, but I don't think uh, Poland is viewed as this country that, you know, is like Italian style, wants to have really, really large uh, budget that will s serve to, you know, mm, spend a lot of money for the uh, economic problems of, of each country. So there's, I, I think there's a reason actually he got, uh, he got the portfolio, because Poland is considered this, this kind of in-between, man in the middle, in a way, country. Right. And uh, with Central Eastern European countries now taking key roles, like we see uh, Caracal is taking over uh, in charge of foreign policy, and we see that also CE countries are in charge of defense and now even the budget. Does that signal a shift of influence for the future balanced power within the European Union to more to this part of the world? Clearly, there is a momentum. Um, I'm not sure whether I would agree that they're, they're, the more important roles are going to the Central and Eastern European country. To some extent, yes. We should basically see what actually will be the content of the portfolios that, um, that, are, that were assigned yesterday. Uh, defense and space, that sounds promising, but we should see whether this will be only you know, some kind of mediation between industries that 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 um, produce arms. 
Um, obviously, Kayakalas, that, that's a big gain for our region. Also, Piotr Serafin, um, as, as someone who will take care of the portfolio, mm, that's also a very, good, um, a very good sign. But actually, because like I said, there is a momentum. There were several uh, utterances of, of Western politicians, how they were wrong, how actually the, the diagnosis of, of people from Central and Eastern Europe um, were correct. Uh, but those are words, you know, and those are also, um, so far, those are only position. We should see whether this will translate into concrete, tangible policies and whether the ideas, the propositions that will come out, out of those commissioners, whether they will be implemented, they will be accepted by the Council, by the European Council, by the European Parliament, and whether this will uh, be implemented. So. Again, I think it's a good sign. It's true. There is a momentum. And uh, yesterday, Uslav von der Leyen said that uh, among the vice executive vice presidents, there are three people who actually uh, come from the countries that joined the European Union after the fall of the Iron Curtain to show that there is, except for the gender balance, there's also a geographical balance there. Um, so this is a good sign, but again, I'm cautious. Uh, let's see how this will, uh, what, what will happen in the future. All right, a very balanced approach. We'll keep this optimism while keeping an eye out for the developments. Meanwhile, thank you so much for your input and insight. Really appreciate it, and thanks for being with us. Thank I'm you very much. World. Thank Cheers. you. And thank you for watching this edition of World Talks. For more news, update, and commentary, please stay tuned to DVP World.